radial stubs. This is going to be a relatively short video, and I'm just introducing the concept of radial stubs. They're relatively simple, and you'll see them all over the place. So we start this discussion with a basic quarter wave stub. And what we're looking at on the left is a microstrip. So we have a ground plane on the bottom, we have a substrate, and we have our microstrip. However, at some point down that microstrip, there's a little piece of metal hanging off of that. And we make that a quarter wavelength long. Now, if we were to look at an equivalent circuit of that or some kind of cartoon version of that microstrip circuit, it would look like what we have on the right. And we can see we have our transmission line. We have one conductor, we have a second conductor. And at some point down that, we hang another transmission line off of that. That's a quarter wavelength long. And there's an open circuit here, right? If we go to the microstrip, if we look at this dangling piece of metal, that's not connected to anything. That's just sort of hanging out in open space. So it is an open circuit. And so then we have to ask ourselves, what does an open circuit look like a quarter wavelength away? And in fact, the answer is it looks like a short circuit. So that's our next picture, the equivalent circuit, a quarter wavelength away makes it look like a short circuit. Now the difference is that original open circuit was for all frequencies. Since we've backed away a quarter wavelength, this only looks like a short circuit at that wavelength, which is a quarter wavelength. Now, if we were to look at the microstrip circuit, this is the equivalent thing happening. It's like we've taken some kind of piece of metal, a via, from our microstrip to ground and shorted it out. However, that is only a short circuit at the wavelength that we've designed that stub to be a quarter wavelength. Outside of that, it's not quite a short circuit anymore. Now, that short circuit will reflect that specific wavelength where the stub is a quarter wavelength and the rest will be transmissive. Let's go ahead and look at the response of a quarter wave stub. So this is a relatively typical response of a quarter wave stub. Now, if the quarter wave stub reflects very strongly at that wavelength where the stub is a quarter wavelength, we would accept to see a very strong dip in the transmission. And that's our S21 scattering parameter. We see a very strong dip in transmission. And we'll see that for this particular design at, at 2.5 gigahertz. Well, remember every half wavelength, this repeats. So if we go up a half wavelength, we see another very strong dip in the transmission. Now, if we look at reflection S11, well, of course, reflection is perfectly high where it is reflecting, but we see the reflection at a uh, somewhere between the quarter wavelength and three quarters wavelength. So right at a half wavelength, we see very strong dips in the reflection, the S11. So that is very typical of a quarter wave stub. Now the question, why the radial stub? So we look at the response of the basic radial stub and it's relatively narrow band. So we might ask ourselves, how do we make this more broad band? Well, one way to do that is to make this stub wider. So what if we do that? Well, we've made the stub wider. That of course increases the bandwidth of this reflection band. However, that point on the transmission line where the short circuit occurs has now been spread out and it's distributed, and that effectively blurs this small band of transmission or reflection, depending where we're looking at that. Well, what can we do? Well, how about we keep the stub wide at the end to try to maintain bandwidth, but make it skinny at the bottom so it's a localized point on the, the transmission line where that effective short circuit occurs. And of course, that is the radial stub. So it's a way of increasing the bandwidth of the performance of a normal stub while not blurring and weakening that resonance. And that's a radial stub. So if you look at microwave circuits, maybe you have a satellite dish receiver on your house receiving you know, cable television. And if you were to pop that open and look at the circuit board, you'll see lots of radial stubs uh, in use. So I just did a quick Google search and literally almost the first two photos that popped up I've showed here. 
Um, here's a neat uh, radial stub circuit where the transmission line is kind of meandering. They're putting radial stubs on either side to get some kind of filter response here. And here's another typical sort of microwave circuit board. And we see a radial stub here. And uh, the more analog, uh, the more of these radial stubs you'll see, you often will see very many in a microwave circuit. So that's all a radial stub is. It's a way of making a basic quarter wave stub a bit more broadband. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.